We all love looking at how graphics have gotten better through the years. Hi folks, it's Falcon and today on Game Ranks, 10 best graphics, then versus now, part six. Let's get started with number 10, it's Uncharted. Oh Lord, is it ever Uncharted. Looking back at the original Uncharted, this is a game that looked pretty good for its time. I remember being impressed by it. Looking back on it though, it is a little bit dated, especially when you look at the newest entry. And that's Uncharted 4. Or if you want to be particular, Uncharted The Lost Legacy. Which by the way is a great game, but isn't nearly as big as Uncharted 4, and that's why I think 4 is probably the better one to look at. Uncharted has always been on the cutting edge of detail, however, as far as bringing that level of detail up to a mass scale, as well as increasing it for a new generation with the PlayStation 4, Uncharted 4 looks good now. Honestly, it's a game that I don't think looks dated yet. Between all of the textures, the lighting, everything is just really top notch, as is always the case with Naughty Dog games, and that's exactly why it's so good to look at these two intergenerationally. Moving on to number 9, it's Crash Bandicoot versus Crash It's About Time. Now, obvious differences here. We're gonna go ahead and talk about both the original Crash, the remade Crash, and then I'll talk about It's About Time a bit. So, original Crash is actually really good graphics for the time. I remember seeing Crash for the first time and thinking, this is really well animated. But it's not just that it's good animation, it was extremely good usage of color palette. To the effect that the low poly style of it actually looks like a style even now. That said, looking at the remake, Crash Bandicoot looks amazing. They were extremely faithful to the original style while adding tons and tons of detail. But I think probably the most interesting is of course what they're doing with Crash It's About Time, which is basically a total revamp of everything that has anything to do with the look. Now not only are they going for much larger looking environments, they've also given Crash an entirely new look that I think actually really suits him. Now this has never been a series about photorealism, but I have to say I'm very impressed with where they've taken this. They've brought in a totally new look while staying totally true to the cartoon animation roots of Crash Bandicoot. At number 8 is Tropico 1 vs Tropico 6. Now the original Tropico is a 2D game, it's isometric, it isn't bad looking, but looking back at it, it is of course extremely limited. Now, Tropico 6 doesn't actually do a ton with the style, and I think that's good because the style of the original and really all of the Tropico games is an enjoyable one. And if you remember, I did the Before You Buy on Tropico 6, and I did talk a little bit about how it wasn't really a massive leap over Tropico 5, but when you put it next to Tropico 1, it's, I mean, it's a big leap. Not stylistically, but being able to rotate around and have everything look nice and enjoyable and fun. Tropico 6 is just obviously a lot better looking. They're totally different eras of games though, and that tends to happen, doesn't it? At number 7 is Dragon Quest 1 versus Dragon Quest 11. Dragon Quest 1, wow, it is very obviously an NES game. Now that isn't to take a dump on it in any way because I mean, it is a game that was originally published in 1986 in Japan. It came to North America in 1989. It has art from Dragon Ball creator Akira Toriyama. It very much has the look of a game from the era, a JRPG. The NES, obviously less good looking than the Super NES version. However, even the recent Switch remake is very basic looking. It looks like what you would expect an RPG to look like from that era, and that's not a bad thing. Those are fun. Dragon Quest XI, on the other hand, is a very pretty, very Akira Toriyama looking, kinda cartoony looking, not fully cell shaded, but to some extent cell shaded game. I really like what it looks like. I really enjoyed Dragon Quest XI as well, and it's one of those games that transitioned really well between eras, I think. At number six is Elite versus Elite Dangerous Horizons. Elite was originally released on the PC in 1984. It did use polygonal graphics, which was very cool for the time. You basically flew through space, which was just stars and stuff, doing a lot of the same stuff you do in Elite now. It's way more rudimentary though. Whereas when you play Elite Dangerous Horizons, it's just, I mean, a really beautiful space game. A lot of the conventions are surprisingly similar to how they used to be. However, you have so much more visually represented as you customize your ship. And of course, 
You have planetary gameplay now. There's just a lot more possible in the game, and it all looks really good, especially compared to the rudimentary beginnings of Elite. At number 5 is Animal Crossing 1 versus Animal Crossing New Horizons. Now, the interesting thing about this is, in your brain, looking back at Animal Crossing in 2001 for the Nintendo 64 or GameCube, you might not think the game looks particularly different now. I mean, obviously it's better resolution, but I would go ahead and say that that's not necessarily entirely true. Animal Crossing New Horizons actually does tons with the visuals. Everything is nice and smooth, there's great textures, there's a lot more actually fully 3D objects, there's the ability to manipulate the camera more, and I'd argue that the original was a little bit more limited specifically because it made a lot more sense to keep everything as like a 2D game as possible. There's a lot of stuff that you end up hiding that way. But now that we live in an era where even the least powerful hardware is pretty powerful actually, it made perfect sense to go all out, or at least as all out as Animal Crossing can be. It's still pretty simple as far as its visuals, however, yeah, it looks phenomenal. At number 4 is The Lord of the Rings vs Shadow of Mordor. Now, the original Lord of the Rings game on PlayStation 2 is not that good looking. In terms of PS2, the series definitely hit its stride around the two towers. But the original was very cartoony looking, it didn't really try to look like the movies in any way. Whereas Shadow of Mordor is actually a pretty genuinely impressive looking game, especially when compared to the original. And then of course, a few years later, we got Shadow of War, which is again a pretty big jump. There are some minor complaints one might have, but I would argue that they're more along the lines of the interface. It's a 2017 release, and it's pretty good looking. It's not the best looking of that year, for sure. And, well, we all know the whole microtransaction controversy. We don't need to get into that, do we? It's not really something that affected the graphics. It was a good looking game. At number 3 is Super Smash Bros. vs Smash Bros. Ultimate, and yeah, I think we see another very similar to the Animal Crossing type situation here. At the time, Super Smash Bros. was a pretty damn cool looking game. Came out in 1999, it was very low polygon, of course it is excusable, because it was also a really interesting crossover beat em up game that there really hadn't been anything like that. And although everything about it was about as rudimentary as you can possibly get, not even looking that great for a Nintendo 64 game, moving from that point to how it looks now, it's actually among one of the better looking games on the Nintendo Switch. They do such a great job modeling, rendering, all the stages, all the backgrounds, all the characters, it's all pretty high polygon considering the Switch isn't the most powerful machine you're ever gonna see. It's not the least either, but it's a very pretty game now. And yeah, when I played like Mario 64 and went from that to Smash Brothers, like I considered Smash Brothers way less good looking. At number two is the original Microsoft Flight Simulator, which came out first on MS-DOS. It is the longest running software product that Microsoft still makes. It is older than Windows itself. And oh lordy, it was cheap looking. It's one of those very, very technically 3D games, but it's almost impossible to even tell what's going on. That's how bad it looks in my opinion at least. And now like there's areas of this game that I think look photorealistic. It's a beyond beautiful amazing looking game that really, really takes advantage of the current generation of hardware. Whether we're talking cities, whether we're talking landscapes, it is just a sight to behold. There's just tons of variety and, I mean, it's not even a comparison to the original version of the game. It's so, so different looking on such a massive level that like, I mean, the original I can't even say like is workable as some kind of a style. It's just extremely low detail compared to this. I mean, this is way better. And finally at number one is Dragon Ball versus Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. Now, I don't know exactly which old Dragon Ball game to compare because there are a lot of them actually. They go back to 1986 and guess what? It looks like a game from 1986. Probably the best one to look at is the one from the NES, which was kind of like a side-scrolling beat-em-up. 
a bit. I mean, there've been a lot of different types of games. They've had the fighting games like Dragon Ball Z Super Budokan on the SNES, which is actually a pretty darn good looking fighting game. But Dragon Ball Z Kakarot is just a really pretty game that really manages to capture the style of the show. And to do that with 3D graphics, I think, is really impressive because it's a very specific style. Akira Toriyama is a very specific kind of artist, and you can tell he drew it, basically, when you see some of his art. Dragon Ball Z Kakarot just looks like he drew all of it. It's great. But what do you think? Which one of these has the best graphics? Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. The best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. So click subscribe and enable all notifications. As always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter, Falcon the Hero. We'll see you next time, right here on GameRanks.